Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be covering this new information that just came out yesterday that we now have a tropical storm out in the Atlantic. Officially tropical storm Jerry has formed. We've got Tom up to the north trying to catch Jerry but unfortunately as always never gets close enough. Looking at Jerry right now you can see that there is a little bit of dry air on its western side and its convection is actually getting pushed a little bit further to the south. Its main area of circulation is somewhere up in here so it's not super healthy of a storm but it is consolidating and getting stronger if it back out over here we are still watching this area right here for development of a non-tropical low pressure system as our frontal boundary that is coming through the east coast right now is projected to come out here and cause a little bit of spin as it interacts with the environment that is out in this area and then back over here in the eastern pacific we do have a storm that is right here that's carrying a lot of moisture not going to really impact anybody in the United States, at least in terms of its tropical winds or storm surge or anything like that. It's going to go into the Baja Peninsula and kind of die, but that remnant moisture is eventually going to barge into Arizona and New Mexico like an uninvited guest. No, there's no need to call 911 but I would definitely be aware of it. Back off over in the Eastern United States, you can see that we do have our trough now coming into more of the Northeast here. We got a lot of dry air working its way. As you guys are waking up and going outside, you're probably feeling that right now. Definitely got a chapstick alert for today. So make sure you're applying that before you go out into this weather as you guys will probably start to get them crusty lips. But yeah, that frontal boundary extends all the way down through Texas. So we could see some thunderstorm activity try to pop up in random places along this front boundary if any instability can build out in front and we'll be going over that in today's forecast but before we get started make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button only because jerry told you so but yeah starting off looking at jerry as we already have gone through our area of circulation is back over here but we do have a lot of healthy convection yesterday pretty much right after i made my video this was upgraded to a tropical storm and now it's a tropical storm with 50 mile per hour winds jerry's gonna make a west northwestern track and then eventually turn to the north as we get very close here to the lesser in as you can see, we do have a lot of showers and potential flooding threats out over here already, and that could potentially increase as our storm comes through. Now, the good news about Jerry is that the wind field will be relatively small, so little check deviations are going to have a big change on whether or not you guys feel any path impacts or not. And as you can see, our models are in consensus here for calling for a Category 1 hurricane as this makes a close approach, so definitely want the Lesser Antilles to be watching out for this storm. But first, we're going to go over our non-tropical low that we are still expecting to form and we've actually had kind of a new model shift on this storm as you can see still expecting that frontal boundary to come down to the south that interacts with that moisture we get some spin and then this coastal low develops now look at this the gfs is just off of the eastern coast of north carolina as we go into sunday like really early sunday morning and then as we go into sunday afternoon at this this actually makes a pretty darn close approach delaware maryland also new jersey so definitely a track shift here and you can see that those lines these lines that are really close together pretty much the closer and more uncomfortable these lines are together you can think of it like a line of people but it's getting smushed closer and closer together and people are starting to get more anxiety as someone they don't know is getting a lot way too close to them and that in weather terms causes a bunch of wind and so we are expecting some gradient winds on the western side and the northern side and you can think of a gradient of pressure like a gradient of color so imagine back over here in the purple that's the high pressure and then back over here in the kind of orangey brightish orange is our low pressure the faster we transition in from purple to this orangey color the stronger the winds will be now if we come over to the euro the euro is a little bit slower with the development of our storm and also a little bit slower with how fast it tracks up the coast but generally as we get into sunday afternoon Noon, we are going to be expecting some coastal impacts near North Carolina. Now, I'm not really quite sure which models to really trust at this point, but you can see even on the Euro model, it does take a little bit of a track to the north. And then look at this, it kind of does like a loop de loop here. As we get like a secondary low try to develop further to its south, we get like this little weird Fujiwara effect. So, this is definitely odd behavior. It's something to keep an eye on, but it's not really showing up on the GFS. So, I'm not really sure how accurate this is going to be if this is going to be there tomorrow. But if this does happen, we are going to have gradient winds scrape up the coast near New Jersey, near North Carolina, going all the way up into Connecticut, Rhode Island, as well as we go into Monday morning. And
and then this does a little loop to loop gets closer again to New Jersey Maryland and Delaware and that's going to bring those stronger winds closer into the coast we could see some actual significant impacts if some of these scenarios do play out so we are keeping an eye on these problems here and as you can see from the euro some wind is going to start to pick up some waves some riptide problems are going to start to pick up as we get into Sunday afternoon going into Sunday night so you get that low pressure system off of North Carolina you have wind trying to slam into Maryland New Jersey and Delaware and by this time the folks in those states are probably outside thinking man it's heckin windy outside and they'd probably be be right there as you can see we're gonna have anywhere from 40 to 50 knots of winds potentially gusting to even higher as this moves up the coast and you can see as we go into like monday morning monday afternoon it kind of calms down but then we get another resurgent of those winds kind of in the same area let's go look at the gfs's solution because this is probably the most interesting and probably the worst case scenario out here you can see that by sunday afternoon going into sunday night we have a large area here of 40 maybe even some 50 knot winds just off of the coast or on the coast here of maryland delaware and new jersey and those are some pretty strong winds that are wrapping around this storm so we could even see some power outages even some pretty large waves make it into land and look at this as we go into sunday night we could have anywhere from 40 to 50 knot winds coming into new jersey so this is going to be getting pretty close to hurricane strength winds even though the system would technically not be a tropical system but it's a pretty strong kind of nor'easter type storm that man if it was winter we would be seeing a buttload of snow with this storm but thankfully or maybe not thankfully depending on how much of a snow lover you are it's not going to be like that we're going to get a lot of rain but and also some pretty strong winds so we do have a differences of scenarios but we're talking about anywhere from 40 to 50 knots of wind and then those winds gusting up into 60 to 65 mile per hour winds maybe even getting close to 70 mile per hour winds in some of these wind gusts if the gfs is right a little bit lower if the euro is right so still some things to work out but overall it's definitely something that i want folks up in this area to continue to monitor and hopefully our models kind of dissipate or go a little bit further away from land we're only talking about beach erosion dangerous waves and rip currents which can be easily avoidable if people just stay off the coast now if we go look at jerry and look at some of our models here for the lesser antilles there's that tropical storm trying to develop out over here you see the gfs and actually a lot of our global models bring this further up to the north but our hurricane models are in a little bit disagreement with our global models so it'll be interesting to see what works out here but essentially it's going to continue to track off to the west until we get a little bit more of a weakness in that high pressure then that low pressure system or jerry is going to move off to the north which is what we see here according to the gfs the main questions here is just how close of an approach to the lesser antilles the storm is going to have we come over to the euro model you can see the euro is a little bit weaker but as it goes up to the north interacts with that jet it's kind of draped it down out over the Atlantic and the northern portion of the Atlantic that could cause some difluence aloft and allow for Jerry to strengthen but again kind of off the coast lesser until he's on that drier and weaker side meaning that the winds are going to be more on the northern side might not see too many impacts especially given just how compact this storm is and we do start to see a couple of closer approaches here from our hurricane models you can see here on the HWR ref it's a little bit further north of the lesser Antilles but it's a little bit closer there HFAST model a little bit weaker further off to the west but still not too many big impacts given how weak that storm is and HFAST B is also on track here with a weaker storm initially and then maybe strengthening as we go off into the future but our hurricane models really aren't too bullish uh, on Jerry right now so the weaker the storm it seems like the closer approach we get to the lesser Antilles but also potentially less impacts or pretty similar impacts as if this thing was a hurricane kind of in the same place now definitely be weather aware out there in the lesser Antilles but uh it kind of looks like this is going to be a close approach it's going to be kind of a scary situation given that you guys are going to be sitting on the beach looking out there saying man there could be a hurricane out in those clouds over there or it could just be a tropical depression but bottom line is there's definitely going to be a little bit of rain out there for you guys so we gotta watch out for that flood threat now looking out across the United States in terms of rainfall you can see that we do have this drop it's going to be exiting out of our country you can see it's over there near Maine Massachusetts New Jersey some rain and thunderstorms are going to be expected out there today that should clear out not really expecting too much severe weather out over there and eventually keep your eyes down here we're going to see this tropical system or Priscilla bring her sassy little butt up to the north and then eventually go into Baja Peninsula and look at all that moisture that comes up through into this area as this trough further off to the west he jacks down into this area area come over look at our 500 millibar winds you can definitely tell that there is a lot up there that comes down and then we get that flow a lot some divergence a lot that is going to continue to bring in moisture lower level winds thankfully though are not going to be that strong with our 
Firestorm and surface base instability could have some periods. You know, if you get some decent breaks in the cloud, you could see enough to see some severe weather. So that's really like the only thing I'm keeping an eye on over the next couple of days for some severe weather potential. And it's probably going to be marginal given all the cloud cover. But if we can get a little peek in from the sun and it comes in and says, hello, how you doing? Let me beam some sun down to the surface and make the storms all unstable, then yeah, you could potentially see a couple of severe thunderstorms. But it looks like that lower level shear is not as strong as what the models were saying yesterday. So hopefully that means that we're not really going to be talking about much of a tornado threat, mainly just like some hail or some damaging winds. And looking at the long term pattern, we have a low pressure system over here and another low pressure system that's going to be injecting. That's going to be bringing that moisture from Priscilla down into Arizona, then we have a little cutoff low over here that really doesn't do much as it interacts with that low pressure system coming up to the east. And then eventually we kind of see kind of a disheveled kind of pattern here, but generally our flow is going to be like this, allowing for some higher pressure to exist here and a lot of dry air to just kind of be dumping down into this area still, meaning that probably for most of this area here, we're not going to see much of any severe weather threats. We could see some things still try to spin up off the mountains and be bringing some severe weather up into this area. But for now, it's just kind of disshelved and then eventually we could going into the 15th maybe see some sort of trough ejection here but on the lower levels it's really not looking overly interesting if we look at the lower level instability though there is some there so maybe as we go into like the 14th going up into the 15th there might be just enough moisture or instability to support some sort of severe weather threat kind of hard to tell what that's going to be at this point but yeah folks that's going to be it for me again thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you guys uh, on the next one stay classy san diego Hopefully, I'll get that reference. If you don't, I would ask you to unsubscribe. Hey.